Hello guys, welcome to Geeks or Geeks. In this video, we'll be talking about how we can handle missing values in machine learning. So handling up the missing data. Now I'll give you example for it, that if we are given this data set, in this data set, we have five different columns, column one, column two, column three, and column five. And now in this data, you have some of these values at NAN or sometime what will happen if you look at your Excel sheet, then in that case, you will see an empty cell over there. So whether it's an empty cell or it's showing you an NAN value, then that means there is a missing value there. NAN means this NAN means not a number, right? So if there is an NAN value or if there is a missing value, both means that your data set is missing. Your data value is missing in there. So how would you treat this missing value or do you actually need to treat that missing value? The first thing is, if you have a missing value in the data set, there are some parameters like XGBoost or LightGBM, which might handle this missing data. So you need not to treat them. You can directly feed this value to your models. But there are so many other algorithms like linear regression, logistic regression, where it is must to handle this missing value before putting this data into your machine learning model. That means cleaning of the data is required. Data cleaning is required. Data wrangling is required. So what are the steps using which you can do? Now, first thing, the very basic approach, it's not even an approach, but uh, let's discuss is removing your rows or columns. That means, for example, you have thousands of rows in the data. Here you can see just three rows, but let's say you have thousands of rows and out of thousand rows, there are just 10 rows where you have these missing values. So in that case, uh, you can remove these 10 rows directly. You can remove the, these 10 rows. And in pandas, you will be using dot drop NA Whatever your data set is, you will say, okay, data dot drop NA, and then you will pass, okay, what is the axis that you want? If you say X is equals to zero, that means you want to drop the rows where you have the null values. So if you have uh, like just 10 rows, 20 rows, like the proportion of the rows in which your missing values are present is very small as compared to the entire number of rows, then without getting into so much efforts, you can just directly drop the rows. Then there is one more option, data dot drop any axis is equals to one. This one is for dropping up the column. And this one is for dropping up the row. Dropping up the row is still fine, but dropping up the column is a big no. Why? Because in that case, for example, I'll say that I have null values in this column only. I will remove this entire column. Let's say if you have thousand rows and in thousand rows in 900 rows for column five you have 900 times nan then in that case there is a option that you can remove this entire column it's not making sense in there but if you just have let's say 10 uh, missing values in those thousand rows and you remove the entire column then that's a big nose because you will lose a majority of information okay then we have another option which we name as imputation. So impute, impute means putting up in. Impute the value of either mean or either median in your data. What that means? For example, in this row, let's say you have three rows over here. I want to impute a value in there. Sometimes what uh, students do, they just fill this missing values with let's say zero. That's a wrong approach. If I put everywhere zero, then zero is actually not maintaining of the data distribution. I want my data to maintain a certain distribution. For example, like column two is following a bell shape distribution. Me adding zeros everywhere you have null value will change this peak, will change the distribution. So instead of that, what if I add the mean over here, right? So mean of all these values, 22, 
by three and whatever the mean is, I will put it in here, seven point something, add it here, right? So I can impute these values with the help of a mean or a mean of the values you have, right? So mean is five plus 17 by two, that is 11. So I will put 11 in here, okay? I will put 11 in here. I will impute this with 11. So this is a easy and a faster way of doing that. And it's okay if you have small values missing in your data. Now, when to use mean, when to use a mean. If you have too many outliers in your data, then using a mean is not a wise option because mean is highly affected by outliers. If you don't have outliers in your data, then you can use median. Uh, sorry, if you have too many outliers in the data, then using median is a good option because median is not affected by the outliers. So it's up to you whether you want to feed in a mean value or a median value. That's up to you that you can easily impute it. But what's wrong with this approach? Or is there any drawback with this approach? Yes, definitely. When I'm imputing up the value in here, I will be just looking up at column two. When I fit in the mean over there, I just use these values, right? That means I'm not looking for column one, column three, column four, column five while imputing the value in column two. That means I'm not maintaining up the correlation between these columns. There is a correlation between these factors, right? I'm not maintaining that. So what should I do in that particular case? In that particular, or, or one, one more approach uh, that I want to tell you, like this mean and median is working well with the numerical parameters, right? And if in case you have a categorical parameter, you can impute those with the help of a mode. Mode means the most frequent value. For example, uh, in a data set uh, like this only, let's say the value were a, a and there is a missing value. So the most frequent was A and then you impute it with A only because you can't calculate mean and median for a categorical data, right? You can't say A plus A by two will be equals to A. Like right now, well, it's working, but for example, uh, what I'm trying to say, if you have labels like car plus bike plus truck by three is equals to something, you can't calculate that, right? So in that case, you will put up me mode over there. So mean, median, and mode you can impute. Now to make the correlation between the parameters, what you can think of, you can think of k nearest neighbor, okay? So now in case of k nearest neighbor, what you do is, for example, you have a data and uh, for example, you have a data with you and these are the data points you are having Let's say these are the different, different data points you are having. And now you have a new data point where you have this missing value. In this data point, this is the, for example, this is a complete row. This is, all these are complete row. I just want to find these missing value, right? So what I will do, I will like calculate the, I will uh, apply K nearest neighbor. And in K nearest neighbor, you choose the value of K the nearest neighbors you want, the number of nearest neighbors. So for example, I've set it five. What it will do, it will look for the five nearest neighbor to it. Let's say these are the five nearest neighbor to it. Now in these five nearest neighbor, when it has found out, now it was uh, having a missing value for column number five. It will take the values from these column five. It will average out the value and whatever the value will come, it will assign that value to this particular data. So this way, because it is finding, it is trying to find the nearest neighbors, that means the most correlated neighbors. And from the most correlated neighbors, which are already maintaining up the correlation between the parameters also, you are averaging out the value and putting in here. So you are maintaining the correlation with the parameters and with the other data points and within the parameters as well. So that's why KNN is a better approach. It is much more accurate than the median or mode approach, but it's just that KNN is a little computationally expensive. Other than that, it's a good approach to use. So guys, this is how you normally handle missing data. Missing data is whether you have a null or an empty value, you can remove rows and columns, pros and cons we have discussed. 
then you can impute the value with either mean median or mode and finally what you can also use is a knn model and figure out the nearest values to it in the coming lectures i will show you in the python implementation in depth that how actually it works okay so guys this is all for this video thank you for watching this video please do like share and subscribe and please do comment down below what videos you want next if you have any doubt in this video then also please let me know and we'll be more than happy to clarify your doubts thank you